Don't be afraid to speak up and ask questions, even though I've hit the recording button. All right, so this is problem 1-5. It's on page 15. Of course, most of you don't have your text yet. But don't forget, you can download the PDFs of these chapters, and you can look on if you want if you've got a device. But I'll read it to you to begin. Represent each of the following combinations of units in the correct SI form using an appropriate prefix. So what did they give us? Well, they give us a part A, a part B, and a part C. And part A is, um, let's see, they've got a kilonewton per microsecond. I'm going to need more space. So this is a Greek letter mu. How many people have seen the Greek letter mu before? Okay, so you know what it is. All right, it's not a, a u, it's a mu. And then for, sounds like a kitty, doesn't it? Mu. Anyway, so part B, we've got a megagram per millinewton. Part C, we've got a meganewton per kilogram per second, uh, no, per millisecond. By the way, one of the reasons I want you to use engineering paper is because uh, I believe it will help keep your writing a little more organized. My handwriting is awful. You want to know the ironic part? My mother was a calligrapher. Her <laughs> handwriting is beautiful. It was. She's passed away. But uh, uh, So I, I don't know. I, that gene skipped me somehow. Anyway, let's take the first one. Kilonewton. What does kilo stand for? Thousand. A thousand, right? So that's what that means. So we could write this as, in fact, I could write an equal sign, 1,000 newtons. What does micro mean? Do you know that one? Thousand. Not a thousandth, almost milli is a thousand. Micro is a millionth. Okay, so if you know a microprocessor, kind of interesting. It's usually abbreviated mu p, although it's not like it's a millionth of a processor or anything. But anyway, so this is a millionth, 0 0.000001, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? That's micro seconds. Now, another way to write this is with scientific notation. You guys know scientific notation? What is a thousand in scientific notation? One times 10 to the third. Or just 10 to the third? Yeah. Since one times is the same thing, okay? So 10 to the third newtons. How about a micro? Six decimals. Negative six. Ten to the negative six. Now when I've got 10 to the negative third on top and 10 to the negative six on bottom, how do I get those two together, or can I? I think it would be 10 to the third minus 10 to the sixth, and then you use the exponents. Well, all we've got to do is add the exponents together, except that this is a negative exponent not because of this negative sign, but because it's in the denominator. It's on the bottom, so it'd be switched anyway. Exactly. So this is the same thing as 10 to the third times 10 to the sixth, because negative times negative is positive. You see, one of the negatives comes from the fact that it's to the negative sixth power. The other negative comes from the fact that this is in the denominator. So when I move it to the numerator, it becomes 10 to the positive, positive six newtons per second. Okay. How do you combine 10 to the third with 10 to the sixth? Add the exponents. Add the exponents. You do not multiply them. When would we multiply the exponents? When they are to the power of themselves. If it was like that, then we would multiply 3 by 6. But that's not the way it is. Okay. So we need to add 3 plus 6. Well, that's easy. That's 9. So this is 10 to the ninth newtons per second. 10 to the ninth is also known as what Greek prefix? Well, let's see. Kilo is 1,000. Oh, no, giga. Mega, mega is a million, and giga, giga. is a, a billion. So this is giga newtons per second. There we go. Okay. Notice that I put the prefix in the numerator. That's preferred. Sometimes you'll end up with a prefix in the denominator, but most of the time you want your prefix in the numerator if you can get it there. And what I'm going to show you is not necessarily the perfect right answer, but yeah. It should be good. You could also write this as a newton per nanosecond. Because mm -hmm. nano is 10 to the negative ninth. Giga is 10 to the positive ninth. This is not preferred, of course. Like I said, we prefer to have the, um, the prefix in the numerator. Help me out with this one. Mega is six. 10 to the sixth. We've got grams. Milli. M-I-L-L-I, -L -L -I. anybody know that one? 
thousandth. It's a thousandth. So zero point zero zero one. Another way to write this? To the negative third. Okay. Okay. So same rule as before, 10 to the negative third in the denominator is 10 to the third in the numerator. We end up with essentially the same thing as we did before. We end up with 10 to the ninth grams per newton. Well, at least that's what your, your textbook says. I don't really like that. I mean, I think they've, they've got a bunch of answers in the back of the book. I think I looked at it something like gigagrams per newton. But I think there's more to it than this. We'll deal with that on the next one, but maybe another way you'd like to write this, since grams are not actually the standard mass in SI, kilograms are, well, we could take three out of this, couldn't we? And we could write mega kilograms per newton. Now, again, compound prefixes are not preferred, but I might do something like that, even though it's not exactly right, if I wanted kilograms per second. Okay. Rules are there to be bent and broken, right? So anyway, let's continue. Mega Newtons will be deal. 10 to the 6th Newtons. Let's leave kilograms alone for the time being. And milliseconds would be 10 to the negative third seconds. Notice all these pretty much come out the same. We've got threes and sixes everywhere. Not really a surprise because pico and nano aren't very common. By the way, pico, anybody know what that one is? 10 to the negative 12th. That's right. So you've got milli, negative third. You got micro, negative sixth, nano, negative ninth, pico, negative twelfth. Okay? It goes by thousands. Anyway, that's all in the front of your book. You don't have to memorize it. So this is 10 to the ninth newtons per kilogram per second. Okay? Or per kilogram second. We could write it that way and it would be okay. You'd understand these are not kilograms, plural. These are kilograms times seconds. But I'll leave the, the dot in there indicating multiplication for the time being. Of course, this is giga newtons per kilogram per second. By the way, if you can't read my writing, just say something. I understand you won't offend me. Sometimes I can't read my writing, so we're in the same boat. But I don't like this. This is what your, your book gives as the answer. You know why I don't like it? Because I know what a Newton is. Do you know what a Newton is? It's a Newton. Kilograms times meter per second squared. That's right. A kilogram meter per second squared. Remember, I, I told you, this is something you'll probably want to write in the front of your book so you've got it. We may or may not use it very much in this class, but you'll be happy to know it a little bit later. And then look what happens. Those kilograms cancel. That's probably a little bit fast. Let me, let me slow down. So what is this equal to? Well, let's see. It's a giga, 10 to the 9th, kilogram times a meter per second squared all over a kilogram times a second. Now you can see that the kilograms cancel for fractional rules. How do we simplify this fraction? What fraction? Well, I see a fraction there, and I see a fraction there. Well, really, there's a fraction here, isn't there? Mm -hmm. How do you simplify these? Well, if you have something like two-thirds over four-fifths, how do you simplify a fraction like that? You invert sum and multiply. Invert and multiply, right? So this is the same thing as two-thirds multiplied by five-fourths, right? So what do we have? Well, we can simplify this just a little bit. I've got a two there. And so this is just five over six. Okay, that's nice. What do we do when it's a fraction like this that is a unit fraction? You invert and multiply. Take this thing, invert it. And how do we do that? One over seconds. Right? But notice I'm putting it in the numerator. See that? So now what happens? Well, now we just write gigameters per seconds cubed. Because seconds squared times seconds are seconds cubed. Just like area in feet squared times the height of feet is feet cubed. Same thing. You see? Does this make sense? Any questions? Let's see. I think that's all the notes I had on that one. Yep. 